et como mai, that's all the Hawaiian I know. Welcome back to Bad 90s Music. Today is another In Memoriam episode. We are gathered here today to celebrate the life and the legacy of another significant musician from the 90s. Unlike some of the others I've done, I'm not sure how much this musician means to people who didn't grow up where I grew up. Today, June 26, 2018, marks 21 years that have passed since the death of Israel Kamaka Vivaole, also known as Brada Iz. That song you heard in the beginning is not by Iz, it is by Brother Noland. It is the song Coconut Girl from 1990. I just wanted to play that song as sort of a reference point, as an example of the state of Hawaiian music at the time when it came out in 1990, which is about the same time that Iz was beginning his solo career. Brother Iz was born on May 20th, 1959, just a little while before the territory of Hawaii would become a state, a part of the United States. He was born in Kuakini Medical Center in Honolulu, and grew up in Kaimuki, which is right around where I lived for a little bit when I was a kid. Started playing music around age 11. Both of his parents worked at a nightclub called Steamboats in Waikiki. His father was a bouncer there, his mother was a manager. He came from a musical family. His uncle was Moe Keala from the group Sons of Hawaii. And his family moved to Makaha when he was growing up, which is where he formed the group Makaha Sons of Ni'ihau with his brother Henry, also known as Skippy. Makaha Sons of Ni'ihau were part of a movement known as the Hawaiian Renaissance, which was a social movement designed to reinforce some of the traditional cultural styles, values, and sounds of Hawaiian music. And they formed the group in 1976, when Iz was still a teenager. If I were to give you some idea of the status of Israel Kamaka Viva Ole as a cultural icon, I'm just one of those guys whose music seemed to have a really broad mass appeal that everybody was sort of into, who ends up dying at an early age. While they're alive, they are looked up to as these sort of figures, uh, or these activists. He did have a lot of political activism in his work as a human being and as a musician. And these guys that sort of ascend to this type of status when they're alive tend to end up dying pretty early, I've noticed. You know, it's as, it's as if there's a sort of shelf life to this kind of cultural figure. It's almost as if death solidifies that status or you know, sort of adds to their credibility as these socially conscious sort of representatives of the world and of the genre that they were in. The other members of Makaha Sons of Ni'ihau, along with Israel and Skippy, his brother, were Jerome Coco, Louis Moon Kawakahi, and Sam Gray. This is a song from Makaha Sons of Ni'ihau's album Keala called Pakalolo. The Hawaiian word Pakalolo refers to marijuana. Its literal translation is something like stupid smoke. Smoked the roads from the night before. This song was written by Israel. Smoked it down to the now so Skippy singing lead vocal. So sweet it was. You can hear Israel's backup vocals here. If you ever down on the leeward side, Pakalolo will tickle your feet. So Israel had this really gentle, sweet, lilting, ethereal, sort of, I would say, lightly spiritual sounding type of voice. His voice has a, a bit of a Neil Youngish quality to it, I think. And if you don't know what he looks like, the man was just massive. He was the, probably the most humongous artist I will cover on here. At the time of his death, apparently, his weight got up to about 757 pounds. And that was part of the reason why he died so young. Unfortunately, his brother Skippy had some of the same health problems related to obesity that he had. He passed away at the age of 28 back in 1982. Israel's first solo album was the album Ka Anui from 1990. It's named after his middle name. His middle name means something like the bold face, and his last name means something like the fearless eye. Hawaiian music had gone through a lot of changes over the years. It has always been sort of influenced and cross-pollinated with whatever was going on in the more popular national music scene. At one time, it was more indebted to big band swing. There have been elements of country thrown in there. And in more recent years, it became more rap or reggae influenced. And I played the song in the beginning, Coconut Girl, as sort of a contrast because that was an example of Jawaiian music or Hawaiian reggae. And the stuff that Iz was doing with Makaha Sons of Ni'ihau was a little more stripped down. It was a little more rootsy and a little more folky. Or at the time of the Hawaiian Renaissance, the most popular Hawaiian musician was probably Don Ho. And it was really more kitschy novelty music. It was more related to cheesy bubblegum pop music than to anything authentically Hawaiian and 
the Hawaiian Renaissance was a reaction to that sort of thing. Not that Iz himself was above doing Hawaiian type of songs when it suited him. He did all types of Hawaiian music. That was just one style that he indulged in from time to time. This is one of his songs from his first solo album, Ka Anoi, called Men Who Ride Mountains, a tribute to big wave surfers. So this sounds definitely a lot closer to pop reggae than his normal Hawaiian folk style. His voice even sounds better on this. That song was written by Israel Kamaka Vivole. A lot of his later material that he became more well known for were covers of other people's songs. He did a lot of traditional songs. His first solo album in 1990 did have uh, the first released version of his cover of Somewhere Over the Rainbow with What a Wonderful World, which he would become well known for. But the version of that song that people remember came from his second solo album, Facing Future, released in 1993. Israel left the Makaha Sons of Ni'ihau in 1993. At the time, he cited financial mismanagement, which was not supported by a subsequent investigation. Facing Future did end up becoming his most successful album. It was the first Hawaiian music album to go platinum in 2005. And to this day, it remains the best-selling Hawaiian music album of all time. This is a song from it called White Sandy Beach of Hawaii. It's a song written by Willie Dan. We were walking hand in hand this is a very typical example of the Hawaiian Renaissance sound that he was doing. Production is very spare. It's very minimal. We were playing in the sun. Israel covered Somewhere Over the Rainbow a bunch of times. There's multiple recordings of him doing the song. It's actually harder to find a release of his that doesn't have that track on it than it is to find one that does. That's how well known it is and probably the most well-known Hawaiian music song of all time. Now you hear that voice? He brings a really ghostly, I think haunting quality to the vocals on this track. This is already such a poignant, yearning song as it is. versions of this song over the years. I'd be willing to guess that this is like the most popular version of the song to date. At least it seems that way. It seems nearly inescapable to me at this point. This is a partial list of movies and TV shows that have used this song on their soundtracks. Meet Joe Black, Finding Forrester, Pineapple Express, Fifty First Dates, Fred Claus, Son of the Mask, and Snakes on a Plane. ER, Party of Five, Baywatch, Inside the NFL, Cold Case, and Glee. The story of the recording of Somewhere Over the Rainbow is actually very interesting. Apparently this was recorded around 3 a.m. and it was all done in one take. Israel just came into the studio, wanted to record this song, and they just knocked out the recording. It really captures, I think, the spontaneous nature and the vibe and the flow and the hang loose style of the Hawaiian Renaissance music that they were making. Here's another Jawaiian song from the album Facing Future from 1993. This is called Maui Hawaiian Superman. And this song is written by Dale Beasley. It's about the mythical demigod figure Maui from Hawaiian mythology. Slightly different from the Maui that was played by Dwayne Johnson in the water. Unlike a lot of Hawaiian stuff, you can't actually hear the ukulele playing this one. So that you'll understand that before there was a Clark Kent, there was a Hawaiian Superman. strong political side to him as well, as I mentioned before. He was very involved and very active in causes that affected the native Hawaiian population. This is the song A Ala A from his 1995 album A Ala A. It translates to get awake, to call for unity among the Hawaiian population. Israel was an advocate for Hawaiian sovereignty, among other things. This is more in the vein of folk protest music. Oh, but this is my favorite Israel Kamaka Vivole song. It's called Tengoku Karakamanari, which is Japanese for Thunder from Heaven. It's about three sumo wrestlers that came from Hawaii that were known as Akebono, Musashimaru, and Kunishiki. 
So on the off chance that you weren't following the sport of sumo wrestling too closely in the 90s, Akibono pretty much dominated there for a while. He was like the Michael Jordan of sumo wrestling. That's how much he was winning. Musashi Maru and Kunishi were also both very highly ranked, very highly competitive sumo wrestlers, and the sport of sumo wrestling became very popular in the state of Hawaii because of them. Three of the top sumo wrestlers competing in Japan happen to be local boys. And Israel wrote the tribute song to them, which is, I think, very fitting. I like to think that he sort of identified with these giant men who were performing remarkable Gentle feats of athleticism. From the countryside, why Manalo? Akebono Musashimaru and Konishiki. I just think it's a really nice, chill song about a sport that most would probably not consider very concerned with finesse or grace, let's say. So Israel specialized in a lot of cover material, as I've mentioned. This is his cover of Wind Beneath My Wings. Just in case you don't know this, people in Hawaii love Bette Midler. Turns out she was born and raised here. Must have been colder in my shadow. In 1996, he released what turned out to be his final album, In This Life. This is the song, In This Life. If it all falls apart, I will go deep in my heart. The only dream that mattered had come true. This is a bit of a dirge. In this life, and it sounds a lot like a swan song. Very nostalgic looking back. This album seemed to be getting a little bit away from the Hawaiian Renaissance folk tradition into more modern pop sort of sounding. The production is a little more slick and a little more full. Yeah, it seemed like there's no telling what he would have, if he had been able to survive, he might have become even more popular and done more music in this style, sort of advanced the genre a little bit more, as he always tended to do. This song is called Starting All Over Again. It's another good example of the Hawaiian sound. Starting all over again, it's gonna be rough. Yeah, you can't even really hear a ukulele in this track. We're gonna make it. He could have really been a successful crossover artist from the Hawaiian genre, I think. Friends, it's gonna be tough. This almost sounds like Lionel Richie to me. On us, we gotta face it. Israel Kamaka Viva Ole passed away at the age of 38 due to diabetes related kidney and respiratory failure on June 26, 1997. When the news of his death broke, a crowd of about 10,000 mourners gathered at the state capitol to pay tribute to him. He was the most beloved Hawaiian music entertainer in his time, probably still continues to be so to this day. If you know any Hawaiian music at all, or any Hawaiian musicians, it is probably him, whether you know that you know it or not. Already, and already during his lifetime, there were artists who were coming up in the same mode as him. He influenced a lot of artists during his time, and even to this day, a lot of Hawaiian pop music probably wouldn't have ex existed without him. Until next time, I am the Jake Wheel. This was Bad 90s Music. Rest in peace, Israel Kamakaviva Ole.